This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. It's that time. An author. Offensive production number one. Number two. I forgot. <laughs> Golfer. It'd be like going on a three-person best shot and we were saying, pull back, you got to make a 25-footer every time. Uh, you wouldn't putt first. I'd have Tim putt first. And one heck of a TV personality. This game is for the Cooper Cup. <laughs> it's the Forum's Jeff Kolpak. Four. I should have yelled two. All right, here, buddy boy. There is a new number one ranked team in the country. The poll just came out, and North Dakota State is ranked number one for the first time since October of 2022. When the Jackrabbits beat the Bison, they have held that spot. And the Bison are number one, Montana State two, South Dakota State three. Shut down the season. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> That's where they, but I'm glad, by the way, 16 first place votes went to Montana State. So it was about 30, what is that, 35 point difference there between one and two. I'm glad there are reasonable people that vote on this, that understand that being unbeaten doesn't guarantee you be the number one team. So if things hold up and these teams you know, hold serve, which I don't know is is certainly no certainty there. There's a there's nope. a lot to play yet. I'm not convinced the committee would not take Montana State number one. So Sam just laid it out pretty well. And if you heard him on that, that if the Bison were to finish eleven and one, they'd have six ranked wins. Montana State would have four and the FBS win. That there's possibility the Bison could move to the one line, which then the Jackrabbits and the Bison wouldn't play until they would get to Frisco because every Everybody said it after the game. The all, everybody that was made available to us, Jimmy Rogers, Gronowski, Bach, all said, "We're going to see him again. We know we're going to see him again." Was Dan that Miller after? Said it too. Was that after Jimmy Rogers gave me the "They scored more points" answer? It was before or after. I don't, it was somewhere <laughs> in there. But yes, you got uh, you got a Bob Knight there uh, on Saturday night. You know, I, I you know whatever. It, it just Matt Ants never did that when he took all the questions. After losing four games with the Jacks, you know, Stig, Stig never did that. Stig never yeah. did that. No, to me that it was just such an immature response. Yeah, it, it's heat of the moment. I'll give him. I, I I'll know, give him that on that. What do we make of uh, what we saw from the from the Bison on Saturday night? Give me your two cents. Oh, the defense is continues to improve. Continues to impress. It's. Uh, I, I think obviously maybe defensive coordinator give him give him some props Mentioned because I think you know. It's his first. You forget it's his first time as D coordinator. So there's probably a learning curve there for Grant Olson, and obviously he's gotten better with how he's prepared his team and his calls and all those things. And after the Logan Cop interception, looks like Grant Olson can still run. He was out there wow, was he while. fast? Both Eric Vanell and I had shots of that. I'm like, wow, Grant is way. And that's obviously why they get the penalty. That Grant he looked faster. Grant busted it out there. He looked yeah, faster there than when he played. <laughs> He's lost a lot of weight since he played. You can tell the emotion was certainly high on that, Jeff. But the fact that Mike, uh, I think, texted us about this after the game, and I didn't dawn on me until afterwards. The Jacks never got the ball in the red zone. I would have lost. You could have bet me your paycheck and mine combined. I never would have thought that. Yeah, that was one of those stats. You know, with a night game, as yeah, you are, right. we're all just yeah. We have twenty minutes to write our story. Well, or correct, you're always writing it during the yep. game. But you just don't have time to, to think process. about that, yeah. Yeah, process stuff like that. But that's amazing that they the, the Bison deep because they had the Mason play, they had the long field goal, and that was it. I, I was mystified with SDSU offensively. I don't know what they were doing on offense. I think they missed the Yankees. I told you that yeah. last week that yeah. I think the Yankees are just incredible, outstanding college football players. And, again, I know they didn't make the NFL, but, man, they made plays. Yeah. They are just superb at that, and they were strong and – you know, mentally, just you know, so hot, so tough. I think Mark Gronowski misses the Yankees yeah. more than anything. Griffin Wildey's still a good player, but he was a non-factor to the fourth quarter. Goring was not really a factor either in the game. Tight end was not a, certainly a factor in the game. That was the the Johnsons weren't a factor. I thought you know, Amar got a couple runs, but nothing that I mean that would scare you. And Mason. They had him run a play, and they ran over the line of scrimmage to throw it. I mean, that was odd, too. This Bison defense that we saw at East Tennessee State, yep. was that 260? Yep. Yep. Uh, 273, I think it was. Yeah, they gave up quite a bit. Yeah. It's, it's not that same defense no. anymore. And that's nope. the biggest reason why 
NDSU is number one right now is because they're stopping people. On the flip side, give me where the Cam Miller drive ranks in the great drives in Bison history. This is pretty mm. good. Seven of seven touchdown to Raja to win the game. I still think the K State would be number one. Yep. I hate it when you yep. rank these things. I'm just but right up. It's got to be in the. I mean, it's got to be a top five, camp, maybe. Camp, but it's for, the Georgia Southern with Brock Jensen. Yeah, yep, because those are playoff games. But I would tell you for on the regular season. Yeah, that's got to be it's up gotta there. Be. And I say for Cam, who had you know game winning drives last year with Montana State, game tying drive with Montana. This is this is his signature moment, I think, Jeff. I, I mean, yeah, you know, you look at the Carson national title drive yep. too. That one. Yep. Those are those are higher than that. There's no doubt. But the, it was just more than than the drive. It was. The fact he never beat in South Dakota State. Yes. The fact that Gronowski always had the upper hand on him when it comes to comparing quarterbacks. The fact that his high school teammate, Adam Bach, always had the upper hand on him when it comes to you know those two. There was a lot of factors that went into that drive. This play alone. The scramble. Very the, athletic. The, the ankle looked pretty good there on the run. That's then, a hard throw. And then Harris in stride, who made a great catch. That was pretty darn good. And obviously the final one. Uh, here to Raja was. It's just you just notch. can't get a better throw than this no. one. This is it, it's money. just unbelievable. It, it, it's the only spot it could have been. Yep. I'm talking a couple inches here or there. Yep. And how about number three coming back? And I I reminded of Darius Shepard that when Chris Kleiman told us we had him for one half, so we chose the second half. Uh, they've used Nelson in spots this year because of the injury. He got hurt the first game of the year against Colorado. Was able to play against UND, had, I think, a catch or two against the Fighting Hawks. But, boy, that's that's the Raja Nelson we saw the final six games of last season that came to play. And they had him in the backfield on a couple occasions, which were something he did last year under the previous administration. And uh, he's a difference maker. And now I think they're going to try to get him back another year. If I, I were would, to guess, I would. Th- but so he's played three, so we can play one more game. And if I'm being a detective here, I would imagine it's probably the last game of the season, knowing that could be something. Well, on Tim the line. said that yeah. two weeks ago. Against South Dakota. He goes, it's it's lined up yeah. where we can play him yeah. two more games. So th- that would be the two, and then he can play if he's healthy every playoff game, and then still keep that year of eligibility, which would be his sixth if he decided to come back next season at NDSU. Yeah, and you know you're, you're not. Remember Kevin Vodlin yep. when he came back for a six year and then Vrod did it the following year after that and that was unheard yes. of. I remember yes. Vodlin; they called him Grandpa. Grandpa, yep. And he had two yep. knee surgeries that yep. gave him a couple hardships. I mean, and Vrod had shoulder stuff the first two years he was here that yep. he couldn't play, and, and and that was just unheard yes. of. And now it's now it's common part of the here. deal. All right, injury wise, there's there's a mass unit here. Sam Young is probably the biggest one, Jeff. That happened in the third quarter uh, on a seemingly routine play. Sam, you'll see here, goes down and can't get back up uh, as he was trying to reach for uh, Angel Johnson here. Um, That's the Oscar Benson one. We'll hopefully have the young one here in a second. But he couldn't uh, get back up on the field. And then he tried to walk off and then came back down. And Tim Pollack was not not – I would say he was pretty clear on the prognosis is not good for Mr. Young. He's going to have surgery, yeah. and so that's well, that, likely a pectoral is what right. Tim told you. Yep, and so oh, that man. what that's all you need to know is when yeah. you have surgery this time of the year, it, other than a little minor sculpt, it's a pretty tough deal. He really came on, yes. Sam Young, when they when they finally put him in the right position from free safety to strong safety, and what they're going to miss with this is a community. This is a communication episode of it because Sam is just so uh, that senior guy that, you know, the the son of a coach. And so they will miss that. Somebody's going to have to take that job. Now, who, who do you put at strong safety? So, I mean, Crumby was out there, but he was think, also – Crumby was playing I think Saturday he's night the, in the nickel most spot. likely candidate, though. So him and, and Ryan Jones and Darius Givens were all on the field at the end of the game. I would think that's probably the case, considering how, I mean, already with Cole Wisniewski being done, that's, you're as... Is he done? Well, let's get to that in a second. Okay. Let me answer your first question. I think of the available options you have, those are those are the three guys. It's going to be a combination of those three that are going to have to go as the guys we know for the rest of the... I mean, the only one they could consider is a true freshman. Taylor Eady 
has Oh, you played. mentioned him. Right. So he's played one game, and Tim said, he looked right at me after when I asked him that question. He says, we're going to have to seriously consider pulling some shirts. Taylor Eady would come to mind as one of those guys. So at just one game with three, was it three regular season left? Yeah, there's four Four, left. four. So he'd have yes. to sit one out. If you decide to go that way, and maybe it's this week. I don't yeah. know. I mean, we'll yeah. get to Murray here on the Bison video blog later today, but that could be a consideration there. But that's – Sam had the, – the move of his in the safety position totally changed the Bison defense. It I just w- did. I wouldn't move Givens. Absolutely not. No. He's, he's He looks at home where he's at now too. So I, I think it's just natural you put Crumby there. Yep. The other injury is Oscar Benson. Uh, Benson got hurt. Uh, as well in the fourth quarter of the game where he got dinged up and his status not knowing. And Benson came off his best game maybe as a Bison as well. I thought Luke Wirtz had his best game yeah. as a, as a, as a, in his career at NDSU. And then, yeah, Oscar was uh, really good too. Well, but Enoch Sibamana, I think, has really emerged himself in that spot. So I don't think there's, there's not a whole lot of drop off there. Enoch's played really well. Since conference play has begun, Enoch, Enoch's been really good. And you got to remember, Kubitz is coming back, too, and right. he can play multiple right. linebacker spots. I wonder if Austin Altapeter gets a little bit more run there, or Marcus Gully plays a little bit more. That's <laughs> They've got to be as, as flexible as possible, that linebacker spot. The big one to me is Cole Payton. Payton, running in the third quarter, had one run that went pretty well. The second one, he fell hard on his right shoulder. Uh, and this is the one that Pollock seemed the most concerned about, Jeff. We slowed it down here after this run, where and you could see he was a little slow to get up after. And you could see right there, watching he was holding his right arm, the right arm when he came up. And remember, I know he's a lefty, but watch the contact as he goes down as he's holding the football. There, that part seemed a bit jarring. Now again, I know he's a lefty, but and somebody pulls him up on a yeah, oh, I bet that hurt. Right, see right there. Yep. That's the part that's concerning if you're a Bison fan, and we don't know his status either, which means Nathan Hayes is now your backup quarterback. My guess on that is four weeks. We'll see if that wow. timeline holds true. Okay. So if that's the case, that take now granted they have the bye thrown in there, so that would take you to the Missouri State game if that's well, an accurate prognosis. Nathan there. Hayes better be ready to go. And. We've only seen brief glimpses of him. I would tell you that Tim Polisek and Randy Hedberg have spoken glowingly about Hayes mm-hmm. since fall camp opened, that if Cam got hurt and Cole had to start, they felt comfortable with Hayes being the backup, and now that very well could come to fruition the other way around with Peyton being out of the lineup. Well, it removes some of your flexibility, certainly, no doubt. at the quarterback spot and the run game and all those things that Cole provided you. Yet they really didn't go to it a whole lot this year. To this to, to this point, not how he had not, he yeah, had a, he had no. about two less touches per game this year compared to last game. At this at this time of the year, you're saying around five and a half okay. touches per game compared okay. to a little over seven and a half last year. <laughs> it just your depth is completely tested, and the fact they still it's like they're still two weeks out from the bye. That that just this this is a long stretch. Ten straight weeks of games on top of four straight weeks of fall camp. This is getting long in the tooth here before you have a chance to take a break. Well, are you tired? I'm, uh, I'm always tired. I got yeah. a five-year-old, man. <laughs> it just comes with the territory, but no one cares about me. Yeah, you I just, if you look at it, though, I mean, at some point, they're not, your drop-off is going to be evident. I don't think it's going to be this week. I don't think it's going to be next week either. I think there's something about Northern Iowa that brings a little juice to that game. But I'm just... With your depth is what I'm asking. Is yeah. like, when, at what point do you wonder, like, okay, we can't, we, you can say next man up till the cows come home, but when do you actually start worrying about the next man up? And what, and what position group? Do you, you know, start honestly, about I think it? they'll be fine for certainly Murray State. Yeah, I, th- I, think I think, I think the Murray. linebackers are fine. Yeah, there's not a lot of drop off there. Secondary, I'm worried. Safety spot there. Yeah, I think Crumby's pretty good. Crumby's looked the part. There's no but, doubt on that. But I don't know if he can make all the calls that Sam Young did and all that stuff. That is the part that remains to be seen. Right. Going to find out. We have to ask that coach about that. I'm sure he'll be just open up about every answer possible about injuries. Let's break. We come back. We'll chat about the upcoming game and a couple other of uh, now moving on because, yeah, it's just a regular season game. Murray State is still ahead. We'll discuss that. Back with Jeff Kolpak on this Monday morning right after this.
All right, back here on Hot Mike. Thanks to Eric for finding this video here. My fault earlier. This is the Sam Young injury again. Oh, pretty look at, right. Yeah. You could see immediately, Jeff. He goes and grabs for the right. I thought shoulder again, similar to Peyton. And then this was the part that really got. He couldn't even run off the field. That was the part that got alarming. We saw him uh, during the fourth quarter of the game. Came out with pads off and a huge uh, ice pack up on. Uh, the right shoulder, but that's a that's a tough injury. There's no other way to look at it for Good a guy. Good kid, that, yes. Yep. Just a shame. Just talked to him last week too about you know betting on himself and how all this has played out and exact. Basically, he said exactly how I thought it would. I mean, he came here as a walk on and has developed into a really good football player. Good flow on the hair. Yeah, there's no doubt on that. Yep. So. All right, so now the question, and you wrote about are you this gonna, Are you going to ask me, like, my top five 20-yard touchdown passes I've ever seen? No. Or where, where are we going? Because I know you, your memory is like Swiss cheese, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, it's Murray State. Murray State is it is Murray is not having a good year. Um, is there concern? of? Would you be concerned of a letdown, knowing the amount of injuries they have? They're going to a spot. I don't know what kind of reception there's going to be there Saturday. I think they're amped at the buys that are coming. There's going to be the number one team in town. Probably the first time Murray State's ever hosted the number one team in the country. I'm just so curious to see what everything's like there yeah. because obviously we've never been there. I have no idea on the vibe of the football, you know, crowd there. The foot, how much interest there are there right. is in football. Now we're near basketball season. Looks like too. a decent crowd last week against um, oh, who they play Illinois State. I don't know if it was homecoming maybe or something, yeah. but this, this is a. For Jody Wright, first-year coach, guy who's coached in the SEC, coached with Nick Saban, coached with Kirby Smart. So he's got ties. He's brought in 60 new guys. And there is a connection uh, on the Murray State roster. The Murray State quarterback, Jaden Johansson, is a former Bison. Yeah, so I want to answer your question first. Will there be a letdown? There's going to be some letdown. Yeah. You're not going to be amped like you were against yeah. UND. That's just, that's just human nature, or certainly against South Dakota State. It's, it's a degree of how well and crisp you play. Yes. And... Do you, you know, are you sloppy or not? To me, it's all about not being sloppy. And I guess, you know, is that emotion based when you're sloppy? I, I, maybe, maybe not. Focus is. That, focus. Yeah, that's, that's, that's now there's it. a difference. Yeah. There's a difference between being focused yeah. and being sloppy right. and, and not being up for the Correct. game. And that's something that I guess if I was a coach, that would have me up at night. Like, okay, we just played an ultra, ultra competitive, emotional game, spent a lot in it. Now we're going on the road to a spot we've never been before against a team that's clearly struggling that everybody's going to rubber stamp they're going to win by 50. That would have my – I would have the alarms going off on in, that. In all my years of covering football, I do not recall a head coach during the regular season saying, we're taking Monday off. Yeah. Yep. And he, he had He's sensing it. his guys are tired. Yeah. And so it's it probably a the, good call. They're, they're meeting. Talked about. Yeah. They're meeting today, but uh, anything on the off on the field, he goes, we're getting them off their feet, and that's probably a pretty good move. So Murray is one and six. Their only win is against Mississippi Valley State, we which know, is we know them. Awful. Uh, they've lost in the Valley. They've given up seventy two to UND. They give up fifty nine to USD. Thirty one to Indiana State, and they gave up forty to Illinois State in a game that was fairly competitive. They lost forty to thirty two. So the Redbirds, as Jeff mentioned this past weekend, and now uh, have the Bison coming in. This is obviously their second year in the league. He's got 60 new guys there. We're going to have Coach Wright, I believe, on the show later this week. So I'm, I can't wait to to visit with him about trying to build He seems like a good there. egg. I yeah. mean, yeah, he seems like he, he knows what needs to be done, which is a lot. He has good pedigree. He's a good uh, – his his past recruiting experience yeah. at, at SEC schools is pretty impressive. It looks good anyway. And li- you want to talk about gauntlet? Let's listen to Murray's schedule the next four weeks. Host the Bison, go to Brookings, host Mo State at Kentucky at SIU. That's the end of their season, Jeff. They're already one and six. That's brutal, man. They're staring at one and eleven. That, that's that's not a that is a rough rough go of it to end uh, end the year. And Jane Johansson, Sioux Falls kid that was on the Bison roster in 2019, went and played at Black Hill State, uh, was a, a finalist as well for the Harlan Hill. So I mean, this guy can he can, he could spin it there, and his connection was with another Bison. We're going to get to see Zeb Nolan this right, weekend, right? Uh, Major Brigadier General, yeah. what's his Zebediah. Twitter? Yeah. Zebediah Nolan. Yeah, boy, the backstory and, and that there's the the connection with that, and I can't wait to talk to Cam this week about his connection with Zeb because that was such a odd 
football deal, Jeff, that whole spring of that? 2021. Why? Well, just of how it all played out. I mean, Zeb was the high-profile transfer, and I talked about this off the top of the show. You know, Zeb was the high-profile transfer from Iowa State that when Trey left, okay, we thought we're going to be in great hands. Mm-hmm. we got a guy who's major college football from Iowa State, high-profile recruit from Georgia. Got, got beat out by Brock Purdy. Right. Who, by the way, that pan out pretty well. Um, we're gonna. He's going to be the keys to the – and he just couldn't figure it out. And then Cam replaced him of, of all teams against South Dakota State, and we never saw – Zeb play quarterback again, and obviously he went on to play quarterback at South Carolina uh, for a game as a grad assistant. Just, I'm really interested to get both sides of that, how that played out. And then out. he played pretty well at South Carolina. Yeah. I mean, he did okay. But I, he's destined to be a coach, but I'm really interested to get to talk to Zeb as well this week about the challenges that laid in, how difficult it was. I mean, he was the backup for Trey, and then taking over why it didn't work. I'm interested in that. Yeah, he was a climbing guy. Kleiman got him, and I think it came down to UND and NDSU, right? Yeah. You know, I'm really uh, just your thoughts on that now, looking back, why it didn't work. The Bison coaches thought Hedberg told us we think he's it's going to work. It just he it, just it wasn't wasn't consistent throwing was, the he ball. He was good in practice. It he just didn't transfer over to the game. And he had a good deep ball. He was pretty good yep. at that. But it's just the mid range, and yeah. just maybe he didn't read everything. Maybe there was that part of it. Yeah, that's just one of those ones that they missed on. Not the most mobile guy in the no, world either. He could not do that. I, I'll never forget, though, that odd spring season, and I was covering the North Dakota State tournaments, the Bison, the game they lost in uh, Carbondale that Cam got the in. The street like, breaker. I'm like, wow. Okay, so because Zeb didn't play well in that game. I think he had two or three turnovers in that game. And Cam got in. Like, okay, that's – but it wasn't mop-up duty. It was early in the game. And then they did it again the following week. I'm like, all right, something's up. But that – Again, goes to the whole thing of Cam Miller, that he was never supposed to be the guy. Zeb got the job. Mm-hmm. Quincy Patterson got the well, job. Well, they thought Trey would be here longer. Right. They thought Trey was going to be here three years, and then it was going to go to Cole Payton. And Cam's going to leave here as one of the all-time greats at the position. It's just a, it's an unbelievable story. You got nothing on that? <laughs> you <laughs> just na- you? I can't top that. <laughs> How do you top? It's an unbelievable story, one of the greatest stories in Bison football history. All right, speaking of another great story, I got to uh, ask you this before we go. Um, because you wrote this late last week, and I thought it was awesome of who you spoke with. Just give us a couple of uh, couple minutes on the great late great Bucky Mon. Oh my my goodness! Um, you know I got <laughs> there's so many yes. stories, and I really can't say them on no, the air. <laughs> a no. lot of them. Uh, you know, back in the '80s, Mike Frazier was a pretty good wrestler, and Mike was facing. And a friend of mine told me this story. It reminded me of it. Mike was facing in the national tournament. That's this was their division two, like the national champion and who, guy who I think was he could play. You could wrestle in the division one tournament okay. too. Who was maybe win that one too, and so <laughs> they're going into this match, and Mike turns to Bucky and goes, "You think he's scared? <laughs> <laughs> he almost beat him. <laughs> Fraser almost beat him. But and then Bucky said something and and just um, the his." You know, I've known the family for years. Yes. Obviously, my dad covered them. Uh, a couple stories I can't say from that my dad told me to. Uh, he, 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 the they lost to. I'll just try to paraphrase it. The NDSU lost to Omaha on a controversial call. Okay. And my dad goes up to Bucky and Bucky, uh, you know, asks him a question, and he goes, "Ed," and he swore, 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 swore on something. And he goes, print that. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> he just had that 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 gravelly voice you could never mistake it for anybody else. It was Bucky. There was there was nobody else. Yeah, he was to. a speaker for my dad's retirement banquet. Wow. And I didn't know that. It was uh That had to be it, electric. It, it was. Again, yeah. I cannot I repeat know. my yeah. favorite line from that, but <laughs> but he, he just had that gift. Gift of wit. Gift of timing. Yes, yes, impeccable, impeccable timing. Uh, when he retired, they had a roast for him, and Bob Backlund, I remember, came back. I covered that, and Miles came back for it, and I, I couldn't believe the the stories they told. And Tim gave a great one for uh, uh, you uh, yeah. in the story. If you missed it, you can check it out at inforum.com. But Bob Backlund, I'm like Bob Back. I remember watching him. He wrestled. He wrestled for Bucky. He knew everybody. And let's not forget, he was a pretty good wrestling yeah, coach too. I, I mean, right. And he then, was really good. He 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 knew how to uh, juice his players, and he knew yeah. how to push the buttons. 
Yeah. I did. Once I did, they had this thing called Red Flag Day. And that's where these, uh, they work them to the bone. And this was, I, I think I was in my late 20s, maybe early 30s, in my marathon running days. And so I wrote a column on it. I went through it. Wow. I cheated like the bejesus, but I went through it. <laughs> It's like a hundred of these, hundred, you know, fifty burpees, doing all this stuff. By the end, I was like doing one burpee to everybody else's four. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, it goes to show you, there's um, he had his ways, and I just, um, yeah, it's you know, uh, Jack and I had just a couple discussions because we lost our fathers yeah. in the, much the same manner. You know, toward the end, they just. They're not the they're shell of the man Quality they used life to be. Wasn't great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it's okay. It's 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 time. It's time. That uh, celebration of life is going to be something else, though. I'm going to tell you that right. That's going to be. Uh, I feel like I wonder if they need a bigger place. Was, that was my next thing. That could, that could be a who's who yeah. who might be attending that. And for people, and I didn't know this about him until I was covering him for whatever, whatever five or six years. That how great a wrestler he was. Like, not just a coach. Like, he was a great wrestler when in his day. He once told me, and he and Leota got married early, I think, while they're still in college. I think Jack was born while he was still wrestling. Wow. Like, just got born. And he would, he told me, he'd get up for matches, or this is how he'd get up for matches. He would picture his opponent going into his house and murdering his kid. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He just want to go Bucky out. Only would do that, right? Just, just destroy tear, the guy. Just destroy that guy. <laughs> tear him limb from limb. Yep. Well, that's one way to go about it. That's the Bucky way to do it. I'm not saying he did. No. I just, but you know, he, that's he, Bucky's deal, man. No doubt. He's a he's a Pittsburgh guy. Yeah. They're they're tough, tough guys. Enough. He came here. He came to Morehead State. Uh, won a national championship. I can't remember how he got here. There's some story there too. But um, just the yeah. and he's, he won national titles here at NDSU four right yes four four national yeah. titles. I appreciate you sharing that. That was uh, that was awesome, and uh, that's like I mentioned that celebration of life. Don't worry, I will else. not tear you apart <laughs> like Bucky Torres. Well, we still got a long season to go there here. Jeff Colfax joining us. We'll see him later today on our Bison video blog. We'll break. We come back. We'll dive into the North Dakota nine man playoff second round coming up. Big matchup between the defending state champs North Prairie and New Rockford Cheyenne. Josh Keller will preview that when we return on a Monday edition of Hot Mike right after this.